Hi, everyone. It's an incredible opportunity to be here at Elasticon. It's great uh, meeting everyone virtually. I am Amrit Chandra Shekhar, Director of Observability, Site Reliability Engineering, and MLOps. With me, I have my uh, from my team, Shakti Vail, who's a principal architect on observability and also contributes a lot on MLOps as well. We both are from Informatica. Informatica is an enterprise cloud data management leader, bringing data to life. We use the IDMC platform to power a lot of customer needs through digital transformation. It's powered by AI end-to-end -end data management platform. We are on multiple cloud providers, multiple regions, and customers are in more than 100 countries. 85 of Fortune 100 companies rely on Informatica to drive their digital transformation. More stories, more customer success information about Informatica is available on the links below. Why we chose Elastic? So Elastic is free and open. It's community driven. It's one tool for many use cases. We use it for analytics, machine learning, AI ops, and it's very highly scalable and reliable. Using ECK makes it incredibly easier for us to use Elasticsearch and deploying Elasticsearch across uh, multiple environments of ours on AWS. There are multiple ways to deploy Elastic Stack. So one is using VMs, using Helm and Kubernetes, Elastic Cloud, which is a SaaS offering from Elastic, and there's ECK, there's Elastic Cloud on KX. We chose ECK because it helps us to do much quicker upgrades. We are already in 8.7.6.1, which is the latest and greatest version, uh, oh, sorry, 8.6.1, which is the latest and greatest version of Elastic. We are able to do much quicker upgrades because of ECK. It is highly secure. It has a lot of flexible configurations, a lot of backup and restore uh, options that is available using ECK. And we'll cover a lot more on ECK options and configurations in coming slides. Elasticsearch is a centralized solution to get data across multiple cloud providers, on-premise systems, or SaaS vendors. We deploy all of our, collect all of our data and store it in uh, the centralized Elastic cluster, which is launched in AWS. The scale is, uh, considering our thing, it, I mean, we believe it is a big scale. Uh, so we ingest about like 37 terabytes of data and they're like 100 nodes. The 2.8 trillion documents that we ingest every month and we store it on 60,000 plus shards and the network traffic is massive. I think like more of like close to 50% of the network traffic originates within this uh, ecosystem at Informatica. So it's a lot of data that we collect and store and operate. The key takeaway which I want uh, people to know is um, we continue to increase or ingest more documents. At the same time, we want to optimize the storage. So the 37 TB per day without optimization could be actually probably 100 TB. Uh, the 1 GB of data that is we ingest can be stored as 3 GB in Elasticsearch, but through a lot of optimizations and engineering and new features such as synthetic source, uh, we are able to reduce our data footprint. Um, at the same time, continue to increase the amount of log that we ingest. So there's a lot of data that we continue to ingest at the same time, we wanna keep the cost low, uh, keep the storage, uh, have storage efficiency. Over to you, Shakti. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a quick introduction about the architecture before getting into the consideration. So this is our overall architecture. Uh, so as Amrit specified, like we are hosting our Elasticsearch through ECK in AWS. And uh, that seems to be a central point of contact. And we collect logs from multiple different sources, different cloud providers, uh, and even from SaaS solutions as well. So predominantly we collect logs, all the application logs from Kubernetes and non-Kubernetes platform through a managed Kafka and uh, uh, the control plane logs from various uh, cloud providers. In case of AWS, the CloudWatch logs will be collected through a Kinesis as an enabler and uh, security logs from multiple cloud providers as well. So uh, very critical focus on this architecture is on the uh, enabler layer, which is mostly the Kafka, uh, which handles the back pressure that was uh, encountered in Elasticsearch directly coming communicating to logs test. So we have a logs that is getting stored in our Kafka and we have certain retention for in the Kafka as well. In case of failures or something, we should be able to get the logs from the Kafka that is stored as well. And uh, 
once the logs are getting in indexed into Elasticsearch, so we have Kibana uh, application, which enables us to use multiple features for searching the logs using uh, the logs for machine learning, creating dashboards, and even creating alerts based on uh, the use cases or business use cases. And eventually we need to be more reliable and highly available. So Elasticsearch all indexes that is getting indexed into Elasticsearch will be backed up and archived into S3 as in when needed based on business requirement, we'll be restoring it. Yeah. Next slide. So with respect to the architecture in context, like there are a few considerations which we have taken in order to achieve the best performance uh, and best uh, 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 utilization as well. The uh, most critical thing is on choosing the right instance type. So it's not that a single instance type is going to work for all the layers in Elasticsearch. It's something like we need to focus more on which instance type has more value to us. So in case of our uh, hot nodes, we use M series and for frozen tiers, we use I and for log stash and other file bit nodes, we use R series of instances. And performance tuning is one of the key factor which enables us to uh, be more efficient in searching the logs faster. So one of the most common thing is we identified the unused logs and we dropped it. And we try to store one chart per node so that enables us to make the searches much faster. Log retention, we have uh, pretty much very good log retention lifecycle managed for each of the indices based on the business needs. So we ideally use hard and frozen tiers in our architecture. So hot tiers is uh, used to store seven days of live logs uh, as per business, like pretty much users are very much concerned about the first initial seven days of logs and later 83 days of logs will be stored as part of an searchable indices using a searchable snapshot feature, which will touch base on the next upcoming slides. So this will enable us to store 90 days of logs in the cluster um, that can be searched at any point of time and monitoring. So we want to know how our elastic clusters are performing. So we have a dedicated monitoring cluster, which helps us to um, visualize our monitoring cluster performance with respect to elastic search queries that has been run and even the log stash performance as well. Uh, we identified a few of the hidden costs and we reduced few where on frequency shard allocation. We tried to avoid frequency shard allocation between the tiers, made sure the AZs uh, intra AZ cost, like we try to manage it with two AZs A and B, and that eventually share, saved us costs and enabling VPC endpoints for uh, reducing the cost and reducing the NAT cost. Field usage, we try to work on field stats, remove unused fields which has not been used, perform a GitOps model to uh, make any changes on the cluster, take frequent backups of indices for every uh, for us in order to be more reliable in case of disaster. Uh, which we'll talk in the upcoming slides and our infrastructure is more secure and we don't compromise on that we have a saml integration across informatica and any communication within the cluster will be mtls uh, authentication will be enabled and that's more secure as well we manage parsing at the file bit in order to increase the performance of the log stash so we do not consider any kind of parsing in the log stash next slide um, so these are few capacity uh, planning that we have taken care. We spoke on the previous slides. Uh, so this is just a pointer to uh, wave here. Next slide. So few of the performance improvement which enabled us to achieve, to store more logs more efficiently and uh, uh, greater in the performance of search. Uh, these are a few of the things. Reducing the unused fields. So there is a feature of field stats where we can get to know which fields has been frequently used, how, uh, how it is going to add value to us. And the fields that are unused, we were able to get it through and uh, remove those fields from our uh, indexing. This reduced our storage uh, and increased the search performance as well. And uh, with respect to index pattern, it's always recommended to have the wildcard to be uh, suffixed at the last of the index pattern. Having the wildcard in between the name of index pattern drops the performance of the search which we identified and sorted out. Use of Graviton instance types gave us a very good performance in searches with a 30% reduce in cost as well. Using GP3 for storing all the index uh, still enabled us to have a performance like it has very good throughput with respect to input output and uh, very much required for uh, um, search uh, performance as well. 
uh, we talked about searchable snapshot. This is one of the wonderful feature uh, which enables us to convert the index to a searchable index, but it, uh, uh, it, it does not store the data in a volume, which saves a volume cost, but still it should be able to search with a lower infra cost. So ideally we are able to, uh, we were able to achieve 90 days of the index that is stored in the cluster and that can be accessed instantly. Introducing a synthetic source in our index enabled us to store more logs uh, than before. Ideally, uh, with one index, like we were storing, for example, one, uh, one million documents, with, by enabling synthetic source, we are able to store 1.3 million docs in a single index. So, which is like storing more volumes with less disk cost. Enabling compression will reduce the occupancy of the disk in your index. So that enabled us to store more logs as well. Um, VPC endpoints gives us a benefit of reducing the network cost, especially on the NAT cost with respect to shard allocation and restoring, I mean, taking a backup of uh, uh, indexes. Next slide. So cluster maintenance really benefited us uh, by using ECK. ECK simplifies us completely the operational uh, efforts, which is very much helpful in upgrading our cluster in zero downtime, not only uh, the cluster, uh, even the operator itself. So we are at the latest and greatest version of Elasticsearch. So kudos to ECK, which enables us to move faster with respect to the upgrades and more reliable as well. Next slide. And this is a overall uh, dis disaster recovery slide. So this itself is a bigger uh, talk about. In the interest of time, I'm just going to cover the crisp of it. So we have a disaster recovery region, like we have a counter region uh, and we keep the ECK running there. If there is any disaster that is going to happen on the primary cluster, we immediately bring up the disaster uh, bring up the cluster in the count in the uh, passive region. It's active. It's active passive infrastructure. So we try to bring up the cluster and enable the logs from uh, uh, into the DR cluster. And we should be able to restore the logs which are archived from S3 as well as and when needed on the business needs. And we can fall back once the primary uh, region is up. Yeah. I mean, do you want to touch base anything on it? Um, yeah, so some of the some of the key points is like you know the data will continue to come um, from the primary region into the uh, streaming layer for Kafka, which is also in the same region. Um, we tend to do DNS change uh, for certain key workloads to get the data into the disaster recovery region. Um, we also have dedicated log stash nodes in the disaster recovery region in case Kafka is not affected. We should be able to ingest data in real time without any DNS change. Um, there's a lot more things to cover here, but you know, probably we can have an, another session just for this. Yeah, thank you, Shakti, for covering the other slides. Um, so, uh, so I'll cover the next few slides here. Um, so, right from day one, we use GitOps model to deploy and maintain our Elasticsearch uh, clusters uh, and the way we deploy our uh, agents across uh, all the um, 300 plus Kubernetes clusters. We use Argo CD for ECK plus uh, Beats, Kibana, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Flux for the Beats that is being installed on all of our Kubernetes clusters. Terraform is used for all the AWS managed services, the Kubernetes uh, infrastructure, and even the worker nodes um, aspects of it. We use API Gateway here, and right? that is for um, having an API access directly so that you know, we can protect our systems from uh, any unauthorized requests or DDoS. We use uh, Elastic uh, for SIM use cases, and that's when we initially started using Elastic. We use advanced data streams, machine learning, machine rules, case management, threat hunting, network and security analytics. There's a lot of pre-built rules that is available from Elastic. I think it's like more than 500 rules that Elastic provides, which is pretty amazing. And we also use uh, or create our own detection rules to be in compliance for our requirements for you know threat and other um, compliance aspects of it. And you know, over the last slide, so 
there's a lot more things that we can do using Elastic. And um, so there's a lot more new features like AI ops, incident management and RCA um, and eBPF, continuous profiling. All these are new features that it's come out recently and we want to start taking advantage of it. And we use Elastic APM um, you know, for a smaller footprint that will continue to enhance. And um, we also, there are some teams who are interested in open telemetry, but we want to use it in um, with the Elastic APM server so that it will enable correlation of logs and metrics and other uh, data that we ingest. We want to build more robust um, usage stats. And Shakti was talking about having a dedicated cluster for monitoring, which is very, very important. And um, we're going to enable a lot of these key stats and cluster stat reports using that. Some key SRE metrics, SLAs, SLOs, MTTR, error budget, which has been one of the many important things that we continue to track. We have implemented a lot of these, but we continue to enhance the coverage of that in upcoming, um, upcoming releases that we're having in the rest of the year. A lot of optimizations work. Uh, we um, are using synthetic source in some of our use cases. We wanted to increase the adoption of synthetic source waiting for upcoming releases from Elastic, especially on the non-time series data. And the time series data and APM, hopefully, you know, it will be announced in the, uh, the next few releases. And looking forward for more adoption of Elastic and um, more collaboration, uh, we've been fortunate to have some amazing folks at Elastic whom we are partnered with and um, and uh, taking this opportunity to thank everyone who has helped us throughout this journey. Uh, looking forward to connecting with everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.